uh, what's up? I am here just recording a tutorial video on something super nerdy and technical for some visual effects friends of mine, but I thought I would share this knowledge with the world just in case you happen to need it. What I'm going to be talking about is using the program PT GUI to batch create HDRs from the Ryko Theta Z1 camera. That's a whole mouthful, huh? I don't have a Z1 on me. We used one on season two of The Boys. Uh, it's about a thousand dollar camera. I have the cheaper model, which only does JPEGs. It's got a little uh, LCD screen on it. It's a little bigger, a little beefier. Runs a little hot too. Definitely want to upgrade to the latest firmware. All right, so what I did is I just made a very quick uh, Word document just with the settings that I like to use. So I use the standard um, Theta app. Um, there are some third-party apps out there, but I've just found that support hasn't been really great or it hasn't been updated in a long time in a lot of these apps. And they do a lot of wonky stuff. Um, so I just found myself creating one setting in the main free Theta app that you can download for the camera. And that setting kind of works for everything. The first thing you want to do is you want to slam your ISO down to the lowest you possibly can, because obviously we want as low little noise as possible in our image. I set the white balance to right in between daylight and nighttime at 4,800, and I'll explain why I did it this way um, later on in post. If you really don't like changing your white balance later on, you would wanna set this to a white balance that matches your camera. So this is the only Theta camera that I've used that you can actually control. It has a variable uh, f-stop. It has two or three options, I believe. 2.1 is the fastest you can go. The reason I do this is because I wanna let as much light into the camera as possible so that I don't have to hold the shutter open longer. It can take five or six minutes to acquire these images. And as you guys know on set, you got a lot of people staring at you. So you really wanna make this as fast as possible. So by using the 2.1 f-stop and letting in as much light as possible, the slowest shutter that you have to use for my setup, as you can see right here, is uh, a half a second. And then you can see my shutters. I do eight images, and these images are about uh, two stops apart from each other. Uh, it works in day and night, interior and exterior. Obviously, you guys can feel free to experiment with these settings and find something that works for you. You could knock it down to five images and try it at two and a half stops. Um, there's a lot of things you could do to make this faster. Maybe you don't need the complete range. You could just do a, a three photo bracket. It's totally up to you to experiment with these settings, but this is what worked for us on season two of The Boys. Enough talking about the settings in the camera. Let's talk about what you do with the images once you acquire them. And I'm just gonna show you guys. I have some samples. These are some outtakes from season two of The Boys. Um, it's been released now. There's no spoilers here anymore. Um, they're pretty indie images anyway. Uh, but what I wanted to show you guys is what you're gonna get out of this camera. You're gonna get two things. One, you're gonna get these DNG files. And that's the big difference between the Theta Z1 and any other Theta camera, is you get raw files. Let me just hit the space bar here and show you guys a preview. View. So what's kind of crazy is it's giving you like the raw data out of the camera. It's giving you the two lenses on either side unstitched right here. This is a nighttime scenario. You can see that at this end of the spectrum, we're almost blacked out, although there's still some detail there. So I'd recommend using this image. And then during daytime, we get completely whited out in a couple of images, but that's okay. You're still capturing more range than you need, which is better than not enough range, right? Um, okay, so anyway, so you get that. You also do get, and I separated it out into another JPEG folder. You will get a pre-stitched JPEG image. And this is the kind of standard output you get from any other Theta camera. Although I will say that the lens is a lot better on this camera and the images are bigger. The image size is actually larger on this camera too. These JPEGs can work. They're a good backup. The camera's gonna make them for you no matter what, so you're gonna have them. It's actually one of the frustrations of mine with the camera. One of the reasons it takes so long to take the HDRIs on set is because you have to wait for it to do this stitching process inside the camera before it finishes with each image. If there was a way to write a plugin, I'm sure there is, I just haven't got around to it or something to actually turn off this feature, you could probably cut the time it takes to take the images in half with the camera. So that's something for someone to, to figure out. For the rest of this uh, tutorial, we're gonna focus on the DNG images. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you guys how to use the program PT GUI to just do one simple stitch of one of these. And I'm gonna start with the daylight one. And a good tip, just so you guys know, is PT GUI is going to actually have to do some stitching. These things don't line up perfectly out of the bag. There's some algorithm that the camera's doing when it does, does its own stitching. My recommendation is to just take a really good exterior 
HDRI with things far away, you're gonna get a pretty great stitch out of that and you're not gonna have too many seam problems. And then you can actually save that as a template, which we'll get into a little bit later, with a closer interior image, like for example, this uh, room that I shot here. If you just try and stitch this itself, you may actually find some alignment issues. Here's uh, the latest PT GUI and you are going to need 100% the latest update to PT GUI, PT GUI, whatever you want to call it. If you've done traditional stitching for your H drives in the past off of a Canon with a 180 degree lens or something like that, then you have this program already and you know it very well. The reason you need the latest one is because they've already created presets for uh, the Theta Z1. So let me show you guys what I'm talking about. I am just going to grab and some just a little trick that I like to do I'm in a uh, bridge here I like to just separate my window so that the number of images going across is my bracket number so you see that I have eight images across here I just think it's a good trick because then it's really easy to just highlight like an entire image like that and drag it in if it looks like this anyway I'm going to drag all of these images right into here like that did enable HDRI mode or no HDRI obviously I want to enable HDRI mode when you click on this thing you always want to just check you can keep the top thing here um, checked because they were taken from a tripod um, the second option here is if everything's shaky the thing you always want to check though is you want to make sure it says true HDRI here so just switch this to true HDR and hit OK. If you look in the masking area here, you can see that what it did is it, it doubled our effective amount of images by masking one half of the theta images and then the other half of the theta images. That is huge. So you don't, you don't really have to do anything. You don't have to do any circular masking or anything like that. You're pretty much done. The next thing you have to do is you just have to go to align images. That's it. And then let it think. And then boom, I've already got my HDRI. It's pretty great. And again, because this is a wide exterior, it's going to be pretty seamless. You're not going to see too many issues. One thing that you'll notice that we do on our show, which I highly recommend if you're not doing it, is we have one of these little x-ray um, passport things here. These are great. They're pretty cheap. I'd recommend any visual effects supervisor on set Dan or Wrangler has one of these in their bag. Um, and we have it clipped to the bottom. We have a full x-ray chart that, um, that we will put in front of the actual cameras when we're done filming a visual effects shot. So regardless of what your white balance is, because you know in this day and age, things go through so many color grades and dailies and stuff like that, you'll have a color reference comparing your HDRI to what the camera saw. All right, so one thing uh, I actually do like to do is I like to center this chart in the center of the HDRI image. So I'm just gonna go to numerical transform and I can never remember which one this is. Ah, it's yaw, okay. Throw in 180 degrees on your yaw and it's just gonna rotate everything. Um, and now you can see that the charts lined up and uh, it's a lot nicer. Eventually we're gonna be making a template out of this. So don't do too much in here, but at least do the yaw 180 degree thing. Okay, I'm actually gonna close this window. I don't need it anymore. I'm gonna go over to exposure and HDRI. You can go down to this automatic exposure and color settings thing here and you can hit settings. I would definitely disable white balance and I would disable lens flare. You can keep this to is necessary and you can say optimize vignetting. I would disable that too. Don't worry about the camera's vignetting. It messes up corners and stuff. And then you can say optimize response curve and you can hit okay and just hit okay again. What you're gonna see here is it's gonna kind of change the curve here. What's happening is you probably didn't set a medium exposure when you did this, right? We're just shooting eight random images at an exposure of our choice. So this is gonna kind of find the midpoint of exposure and it's gonna kind of adjust everything to, um, to that midpoint. So when someone opens this up in Photoshop or something like that, they're gonna be right at the middle of the HDRI. I'm actually gonna undo this. I've found just through trial and error that I don't like doing this because it will sometimes pump in more noise into your image. So I'd rather that an artist has to open the HDRI and it's a little bit darker and it just looks better if they just slide it up in post in something like Photoshop. Like you can adjust this curve in Photoshop instead of baking this curve in right now, which PT GUI to me just doesn't seem to do a good enough job doing. Long story short, ultimately leave this page alone. You don't need to, but if you do find that your image is coming out really dark or messed up, you might want to play with that curve. One other thing I do want you to look at on this page though is this thing called noise floor. Something I haven't mentioned yet is that DNGs actually don't work very well in PT GUI. And this noise floor has something to do with it. So I'll show you that in a second. But all right, pretty much we're done. I'm just gonna go to create panorama, all the usual settings. I used to use .hdri files. Now I've switched to EXR 
totally up to you. It just seems like EXR is what everyone's using. Again, they're gonna default to this tone mapped JPEG, which we can keep it as a reference, but you don't really need it. We, what we actually want is this HDRI panorama. And then uh, we wanna save it somewhere. So I'm just going to, um, I'm just gonna save this one to my desktop right now, just to make it easy. You can name it, whatever you wanna do. I'm just gonna leave it alone for right now. I'm gonna stitch this panorama. Takes a little bit of time, much faster in this day and age though than it used to be. All right, so everything's shown up here. We have our JPEG right here, which you can look at. So this is just a nice quick reference. It's not an HDRI or anything like that. We have this EXR, which I'm gonna open in Photoshop. So just give me one quick second while Photoshop opens up. Uh, I'm just gonna go to my desktop and I am gonna open up my EXR. Just always hit okay for that EXR thing, doesn't really matter. So here's what I was talking about. I'm in the center down here. I can control my exposure. If I were to change that curve, maybe it would have come in a little bit darker, but it's pretty easy. All the information's there. You can see that we've got this wonderful, we go down to about here before the sun clips. We go to here and we've got lots of nice detail in the shadows, just a little bit of clipping on the top and bottom. But this is a very good HDR. Actually, this worked perfectly through the DNGs. All right, so let's try the same exact thing on one of my nighttime HDRs and see what happens, shall we? So I'm just gonna go back into bridge. I'm gonna highlight this night interior stuff. You know, let's do this one here. This is a pretty rough one, pretty dark, right? So I'm gonna take this one, drag it in, and I am going to um, enable HDRI mode, true HDR, and align images that fast. Um, okay, so pretty bright. Now we've got some weirdness because people were moving. That could be something that happens to you guys, by the way. I'm still of the philosophy that better to have something than nothing. So if you can't get your crew out of the way, just shoot the HDRIs anyway. They can always be painted out in Photoshop or something like that in post, but it's better than not getting anything. I'm just gonna close this. I'm not even gonna worry. I mean, I, I could go into my numerical transform and just turn this to 180. Uh, this was me shooting it. I didn't even have a chart bad me and uh, I'm just gonna go to uh, my project settings here I'm gonna turn my noise noise floor down just to sort of exaggerate this issue for you guys really quickly that I've come and encounter to I'm just gonna go to create panorama EXR right on the desktop and I'm just gonna hit create panorama all right so I'm opening up the new one you can see it it, it kind of comes off very dark at the midpoint um, but that's okay, infill is there, but look at that. What the F, right? Um, we've got all these crispy dots right here and these suck and I was super bummed when I first saw them. I was like, man, this sucks. I mean, I, the raw file is supposed to be better. The things I've discovered that you can do to fix this problem, you can go and you can play with, you can go into exposure HDI, you can play with this noise floor setting here and you can raise it up. I'm going to raise this up a bunch the other way now, maybe to the midpoint here. And I am going to create this panorama again. And this looks a lot better, right? We got rid of all of the noise. Um, I have found though, uh, just to warn you guys, if you crank that noise floor too high, you'll also clip some, like you'll get some weird like black clipping errors. It happened pretty good this time, but take my word for it. It can also lead to errors. So what that means is you would have to actually, I think you might be able to see some right in here yeah see this see this stuff that's happening in here it's actually in the whites it looks like so that's what happens when the no noise floor gets too high it doesn't know what to do with these pixels also doesn't look good right this is a long-winded way of me saying don't use dng files so what are we gonna do what i found is that you want to convert all of your dng files to tiff files and it's not that hard to do if you have an adobe cloud subscription which you should if you work in visual effects or anything graphic related um, and it's using bridge and camera raw and it's really easy you can just in bridge you can control a select every dng in a folder which is why i have three sets of hris in here so you can see that you don't have to do this one at a time you right click and you say open in camera raw and that's going to open it in our camera raw yeah, so this is like the newest camera raw, whatever. Um, by the way, this is where, um, when I set everything to 4800, just to show you guys, this is where you can change your white balance if you want to before you spit these out. So if you happen to jot down what the white balance was for a series of images, for example, let's say that when we were outdoors, right now I actually had it at 5600, but let's say I wanted it to be 4200. 
can just type in the temperature right there and you can see that your images have changed white balance and that'll actually bake it into the TIFF images we're about to make. This guy was all the way down at 3700. I'm not sure why we didn't just have it set to 4800 here, but that's okay. Um, or 4200, whatever we want it to be. You can see we could, we could, we could make this 5600, which would be daylight balanced. Um, we could bring this all the way down to 3200, which is tungsten balanced. The choice is yours here. Um, you can do whatever you want to. Um, I recommend just writing down what the white balance was in the camera and then plugging it in here. But once you've done that, you're just gonna highlight every single image right here. So this has changed a little bit. Sorry guys, this has changed a little bit. You're gonna highlight every image here. And in the new version of Camera Raw, you're gonna come up here to this little icon that says convert and save images. And it's gonna bring up your sort of classic Adobe conversion thing. You're gonna want it to be TIFF. You're gonna wanna select a folder. What I do is I just make a folder called DNG and then I make a folder called TIFF and I'll put these in the folder called TIFF. I leave the file names alone so that they match the DNGs. And the very important thing you wanna do is you wanna switch it from eight bit channel to 16 bit so that we keep all that, all that juicy range. Leave everything else alone and just hit save. This is a pretty fast operation. I've done hundreds of images. It takes a couple of minutes. Um, so I'll just come back when this is done. All right, so now we're done with that. I'm gonna hit done. And I'm gonna go back into bridge. I'm gonna go out here and go into TIFF. And you can see that now we have TIFFs. This is something, unfortunately, you have to do with all of your DNGs if you want to avoid the potential of having that little pink popcorn problem. It just works better. So I'm just gonna go file new and just show you guys really quickly. I'm gonna say don't save. Let's take that crappy nighttime one, drag it in here, and just do this really fast. Enable HDRI mode, true HDRI, align images. And uh, yep, that's all good. I'm not gonna worry about the 180 degree thing. I'm just gonna go to exposure HDRI, make sure this noise floor is pretty low. We actually don't really need to worry about that anymore. And I'm gonna go create panorama, HDRI, save it to my desktop, save and create panorama. All right, so one thing I ran into um, when doing this was an open CL error. Um, it's all PT GUI defaults to using your GPU now, which is really cool. It's why things are a lot faster. Um, if that happens with the TIFF files, just quit it and open it again and it'll work just fine. Um, sometimes it gets confused when you try and do DNGs and TIFFs at the same time. You can also hold down shift and open PT GUI to turn off the GPU. Then you're using your processor, but it's gonna be a lot slower. So be careful with that. Um, all right, I'm gonna open Panorama 3 and you are gonna see that there's none of that pink stuff. There's like one little dot here, um, but I, that could just be a pixel error in the camera or some you know, neg negative pixel error, pretty minor. But generally speaking, no issues with that. And this is a pretty quality HDRI. Just to show you guys, the image size is 7,382 by 3691. It's pretty darn large. Um, it's really crisp if you go full resolution. Um, you've got a lot of detail. You get some weird blasting out in the lights when they're clipped, but when you come down here, you know, as a lighter, this is kind of where you want to be. You get to see where all your light sources are very nicely. Now, what I'm going to show you guys is how to create a batch template so you can do this even faster. This is what everyone's been waiting for. This is the main course of today's meal. What we're going to do is we're going to make a new project. And uh, it's been a while since I've done this, so I might fumble around a little bit, but that's okay. It gives us all time to learn together. We're gonna create a batch template. So the way we're gonna do this is we're gonna go into our TIFF folder. Actually, again, I like to do it through here just because it's, it's easier to, to know I'm getting the right things. And I'm gonna use my daylight exterior one that's really wide because that's the one that's gonna get me the best stitch. And I'm gonna drag it into PT GUI. And we're gonna enable HDR mode, true HDR and we're gonna align images. Uh, we're gonna go into numerical transform. We'll do the yaw at 180, apply. I'm not sure why it's, uh, it's not updating here. Welcome to the wonderful world of uh, computers, um, but there we go. I'm gonna trust that it looks fine. There we go, so my image is fine. I'm just gonna switch this to 180. I'm not gonna mess with this, this horizon issue. It could have been hilly there, or maybe we didn't have our tripod lined up perfectly, but it's gonna be different on a case-by-case -case basis. So it's definitely for a template, better not to mess with that. Okay. Um, something that I, I don't always do, but I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna go to this um, optimize thing. I'm gonna optimize and you want this to say good or very good or excellent uh, here. Um, I'm actually surprised that this only says good. Usually 
it's better than that but this is fine good is going to be fine you can also just look around your image and make sure that all the stitching looks good but you want it to be good if you get one that says like not so great or average or something like that find a different image to use for your template because that means you're going to have stitching errors if you wanted to you could do an optimization here but again that's going to be different from image to image so i don't think it's a good idea and i'm just going to lower the noise floor just a little bit here now here's where we get to do a little bit of fun. And by fun, I mean not fun at all. We have to go through all these check boxes, but this is where we create our template. We wanna keep all these checked. And you can. this is where if you want it to run your exposure, your curve setting, you can check this box here and say perform automatic exposure and color adjustment. Again, I just, I don't like to mess with that stuff. Uh, HDR default, if bracketed ex exposures, if bracketed exposures, I can't read, if bracketed exposures are detected, enable HDR mode and link the bracketed exposures. Yes, we want to do that 100%. Do this without asking. You know how every time I pop it open, it says, hey, do you want this to be an HDRI and do you want them to be linked? Guess what? You check this box, it's not going to ask you every time, which is great, which is exactly what we want to do. When this project is loaded into the batch stitcher or when it is used as a template in the batch builder, do align images and save the modified project. Um, okay, so basically what this is saying is, and you could save two templates actually and try both. If you check do align images, it's actually gonna run the align images process on every set that you use the template on, which means that if it's an interior room, it's gonna rerun the stitching process and you might get some of those issues. If you take the, if you uncheck this box, it's gonna use your pre-built stitching from this HDRI. And what you wanna do is you wanna create your best possible stitch on a template image, uncheck this box and let it apply that stitch to every other set that you use in the future. So I'm going to keep that unchecked. Uh, you can go into the naming here. This is where you can change the name to your project or something like that. I'm just going to leave this alone for right now, but feel free to change it. You should. Um, one thing that I like to do is um, you have two choices here. You can either say just save them right in your source folder so they'll be right by the DNGs and then move them out. Or you can actually specify a folder. So let's say you create one unified folder on your computer called like HDRI dump and it'll put everything in there and then you can go in there and you can organize all your HDRIs. Same for, this is the project file and then this is the panorama itself. It's the same sort of options here. I'm gonna leave all this alone for right now. You guys can change that to how you like it to be. And then it's asking you here in template behavior, what parts of this do you actually wanna do? Yes, you want, you basically want all these checked. Link images in the target project. You have two choices here. You can say same as this template because they're already linked. Um, or you can just force it and say automatically link images based on exposure. I would just leave it as save as template. So you wanna leave this unchecked again if you, in batch builder behavior, which we're gonna use the batch builder, if you check this, it's gonna like check the lens settings again and it's gonna change some stuff. And again, because we're using the same camera and the same lenses at the same exposures every single time, you don't need to check this. Um, and the rest of this stuff, I think you can just leave alone. So that's pretty much it that's going to work so now the last thing you want to do is you just want to make sure your settings here are the way you want them to this is actually going to get overridden you might want to change something i just realized i was doing wrong is i had um, the exr to with alpha half float very important um, since we're making a 32-bit image you want to go 32-bit float turn off the alpha channel we don't need it you can use compression if you're going to use compression use zips or zip that's the standard for programs like Nuke. So I should have done that on my images before. That's my bad. Make sure this is 32-bit or just change it to HDR Radiance, which is a 32-bit file by default. But um, <clears throat> yeah, JPEG, I don't really care about. You can do whatever you want to. Keep all your width and height default. Great. We're going to leave the rest alone. That's it. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go File, and we're going to go Save as Template. And I already have a couple because I've done it. You can see that I've created two templates actually. One where it automatically calibrates the camera because sometimes maybe you want to, I don't know. And one where you don't need to because the camera is all already aligned. I'm just gonna make a new one, Z1 already aligned version two, just so we have it and I'm gonna hit save. All right guys, now that we've created that template, let me show you how to use it because it's a little confusing uh, in PT GUI, but once you get it, it makes sense. There's two things here, the batch stitcher and the batch builder. We're gonna start with the batch builder and it's gonna bring up this little window. And what you can do here is you can drag in your, let me make this a little clearer for you guys. You can select images manually. I think you can just drag them in uh, like this. Uh, no, you can't, okay. 
So you're gonna go uh, select images manually and you're gonna go in here. And again, I kind of like to just um, line this up so that I see all eight of my images so I know that I'm doing this right. Uh, there we go. And uh, we'll just take one for now. In fact, I'll take this third one here. It's a different one. And uh, oops, take this third one. It's a highlight all the images that you want and hit OK. I'm going to select my template right here. I'll do already aligned version two. Uh, again, it's going to give you one more override. So if you wanted to run aligned images, you could right here. But I'm not going to. I'm just going to put it right here. And then you can. it's going to create a project file and save it. So you can choose to just delete that project file or you can delete to keep it. You can create a list uh, and send it to the batch stitcher, which we're going to do a little bit later. But right now, I'm just going to generate projects. Uh, it's going to ask you if you want to send this project to the batch stitcher now. Just say yes. And it is creating my panorama. You can see the slider here without me doing any of those settings in PT GUI. All right, so now that that's done, um, let's just go into here. And you can see it's right in my TIFF folder. It's a little little ugly, but that's okay. But right down here, you have a project file. So if you wanted to go in and make tweaks, you could, or you could have chosen to delete this file. We have our JPEG, and then we have our 300 megabyte HDRI. Let's open up that HDRI and see what it looks like. Considering I haven't even looked at these images, um, it's still gonna ask you about the alpha channel thing, no matter what you do, because um, it's weird with HDRIs, but let's open this up and let's Take a look and look at that. That is a really nice quality. Let's make it full screen. HDRI. Um, there's Ryan taking the HDRI and a crew eagerly awaiting him finishing the HDRI. Um, but what's great about this one is we're interior. I'm not seeing, if you saw stitching problems, they'd be right here. I'm not seeing any stitching problems because we got a great stitch from that exterior image. And then, um, you know, just to show you guys the power of HDRI, we have outside a window we're in a dark room it looks like we've got the full range outside that window and then we've, we can also brighten it up and get the full range inside here's some more windows over here just to show you um, so yeah and you can even see these lights coming back to life here and I can go a lot darker than that yeah in fact I think we've got like the full range of everything in this one which is great so boom I just batch processed an HDRI but I'm gonna make it even easier on you guys because that's still too much work for me because there's no way you're gonna do one at a time, right? No way, so I'm gonna delete these. I'm gonna do one more thing. Okay, this is it guys. This is what we've been building up to. Now I'm gonna show you how to do the best batch processing of your lives. You're gonna love me for this. We're gonna go back into the batch builder. Instead of saying select images manually and going and plucking out the images in the folder, we're gonna say detect panoramas. We're gonna make sure there's a couple of options here it can try and be smart you can try and have it detect images based on the time they were taken or um, the camera lens or whatever i found that those don't work i found the safest way to do it is to go with multiple panoramas per folder with a fixed number of images to be clear you can't have any bogeys in this folder so i'm going to browse to my tiff folder and you want to make sure that you have exactly eight images per hdri sometimes you have a misfire only three are taken or something like that you want to go through your folder and clean it up i've done 30 HDRIs at once, like 30 times eight images with no problem doing this. I'm gonna change this to TIFF. You can have it sniff out the file extension or you can leave it empty and then it'll use every file in the folder. Um, what's kind of cool about this is if you have a couple like some bogey that's not a TIFF file in there, it's gonna ignore that file. And I'm gonna say eight images per panorama and I'm gonna hit detect panorama. Boom, it just detected all my panoramas, which is super amazing. Um, so now um, I don't need to worry about any of this stuff. I'm going to pick my Z1 already aligned to template. Not going to run aligned images. I'm actually just going to delete project files because I don't really care. Uh, and I'm going to just check this box this time. It says send the generated batch list to the batch stitcher. And I'm going to say generate projects. It's going to take a little bit of time thinking. I have three projects. It's already running it, guys. It's already creating my HDRIs out of that folder. I am going to have all three of my HDRIs done in, I don't know five minutes, 10 minutes. Um, I've, again, I've done about 30 of these. It takes 15, 20 minutes. It's gonna depend on the power of your computer, but that is it. Once you have created a template to your liking, you never have to deal with the settings again with this camera, and you can just start spitting out HDRIs like crazy, and I love it. All right, guys, so it's done. It took about mm, five minutes to do those three. Um, let's go take a look at our results. So again, you can see we don't have the project files now because I told it to delete them, but we have our JPEG and our HDRI. All I pretty much do is I go sort by type, and I just highlight all this stuff. I cut and paste it out of the folder. 
uh, make a new folder called um, HDRI, paste it in there. Now again, you can choose to have had these already go to some folder of your liking, so you don't have to do this, but it's the easiest way for me. And uh, let's take a look, and yep, there it is. Look at that. Um, that's one, two, all right. A little bit darker and by the way this is like a, this is a really quality HDRI to me I mean, look at the detail a little bit of an overcast day nice and flat which is cool you don't want to mess with your your colors too much in HDRI world but you know there's distortion obviously because it's an HDRI but look at the detail in the leaves off of this camera much better than the uh, the older Thetas for sure all those people that used to complain to me that it's not real and you're still using uh, Canon cameras like uh, the dinosaur days uh, can uh, can use this but I don't know. I think this is a really uh, pretty pretty high quality image here. And then of course we've got our last one here. Wonderful. Uh, again, nice, really high quality, very useful. That is it, guys, for this tutorial. I will actually take my PT GUI template file and get, link it down below. So if you don't even want to bother making a template, you can just use mine. If you just go save as template in PT GUI, it'll show you what folder it is and. Just copy and paste that path and paste it in there and you'll have your own template. I hope you guys like this video and I will see you guys uh, whenever I feel like doing another video. So I will see you guys next time.